Dealing with difficulty is a unit that we have in all grade levels from 6th through 12th. In our middle school curriculum, it'll be the fourth unit and in high school, the third. In both cases, directly following the informational texts unit. As you begin to review this unit, you'll immediately notice a lot of similarities with that informational text unit in terms of structure and some of the work students do in these sessions. That is in part because this unit is created around a similar focus. Although instead of working with more straightforward informational texts, whose purpose is to inform the reader, the dealing with difficulty units work with literary nonfiction. This is also why dealing with difficulty is placed after the informational text unit. Literary nonfiction can often include texts whose purpose is unclear or ambiguous, and as a result, there tends to be more complexity in interpreting them. The concepts might be more abstract, the form might be more experimental, and the reader has to work through more than just technical vocabulary. In most units, you will see some use of the search and study again, although some of that workflow looks a little different in order to account for the different kinds of complexities. Similar to other IBD units, students will get a chance to do a very close reading of a text that includes multiple readings, careful comprehension work, and challenging open-ended interpretation. In this unit, students will typically be working through standards focused on close reading and interpretation of texts. They'll need to attend to figurative language, unpack an author's message or theme, and find their way through challenging and ambiguous passages, usually writing an argument for their interpretation. The typical structure here is that students spend about four to six sessions working through one text and writing about it, and then another four to six sessions on the next text. Unlike the informational text unit, these texts aren't thematically linked or meant to be compared to one another. Essentially, the unifying idea is that each of them presents significant challenges to the reader, and each can be tackled with focused and deliberate work. So technically, you could do the first part of this unit at one time and then come back and do the second part at a later time if you needed. Work with both texts is deliberately scaffolded in a way that specifically enables students to take up the challenging work of making sense of the text. Now this almost always begins by giving students time to identify moments that they find confusing and challenging in the text. We want to normalize the idea that all readers encounter difficulties, and we want students to attend to their own comprehension. Recognizing when things have stopped making sense is an important skill for readers. This is often followed by either search and study work, as with the informational text units, or time to work through challenging moments with peers and make sense of what's going on through discussion. Middle school units include a poem for students to work through, and in high school, students will usually have to work through one historical text in the unit, a text that presents the kind of archaic language and syntax that can stump any reader the first time around. These texts are usually processed with focused translation work, allowing the students to parse the ideas one section at a time and assemble them together as a whole. So, what are some of the common practices that you'll want to be aware of? Well, first, Usually, right after the first read, we ask students to reflect on how difficult they feel the selection is, and we revisit this question with students at the end of their work with the text. Now that you've spent this time with it, do you feel like you understand it better? These are deliberate moments. At the beginning, the text probably will feel fairly challenging. And by the end, even if students aren't sure they get everything about a text, they should feel much more comfortable with it. Now from point A to point B, all that's happened is they've had time to read it, reread it, talk about it, and think through the challenges together. There's no part of the lesson where the teacher comes in with the right answer or presents some secret hidden information that students need in order to understand it. The point is that a lot of the time challenging texts just require additional time and attention. Another element. I mentioned earlier that it's important for readers to recognize when something has stopped making sense to them. Well, as adult readers, we tend to do this by habit. Not all of our students will. So you'll often have a chance to review with students what it looks like and feels like to lose the thread of a text. For example, you may realize that the mental movie that was running in your head has stopped playing. So certain comprehension strategies, like monitoring your own understanding, chunking, summarizing, asking questions of a text, these are baked into the flow of the work in such a way that you might not even realize how intentional they are if you don't stop to notice them. 
The writing work for dealing with difficulty in some ways resembles introduction to argument in that it is primarily structured as interpretive argument writing. Our focus is on what the author's message is and on making a case for our particular interpretation of that message. In high school, the nature of some of the texts means that the writing becomes more informational explanatory at times. So for example, we're not so much interpreting Plato's allegory of the cave as explaining the central idea and how Plato develops it. In either case, by this point in the school year, you probably have some sense of what some of your students' needs are in their writing. So we encourage you to flip through the resources in the form guide or to look through options in the targeted writing lessons that would make sense to incorporate here. Maybe you want to help students find smoother ways of incorporating their text evidence. Or maybe it's time to think about how crafting transitions can help a reader understand your writing better. I want to make one final comment about the texts in this unit. It is okay for you, the teacher, to feel a little confused or uncertain about some of them. That can be uncomfortable. But if you haven't had a chance to talk through these texts yourselves with a group of your peers or a class of students, you may not feel like you have a settled interpretation in mind. That's okay. Because your role here isn't to make sure that students arrive at the same, quote, correct interpretation. To some degree, you're all in it together with a text like Ishmael Reed's Foolology. And it's okay to make students aware of your own uncertainty, to let them know that even expert readers encounter challenges. During students' discussions and small group work with these texts, part of your work is to help them talk and think in productive ways. So not necessarily, here's what the author is saying here, but more like asking probing questions and modeling the kinds of moves that a person might make. What are some parts in the text that might help us think about this? Are there any kinds of connections that we can make? Are there any moments that seem important for some reason? Are there any big strange questions that it feels like we need to resolve? The mindset here is that reading is active, collaborative sense-making. And we get better at it together, and we learn from one another throughout this process. As with all of our units, take a look at the introduction as you start planning, review any search and study or translation work in the sessions, take a close look at the writing tasks for your grade level, and read through each of the texts in the student reader. Yes, they are challenging. And in our experience, you'll be surprised by what your students can do with them.